Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm going to be doing a video on motion compensation. I've been seeing this topic come up quite a bit in the Facebook DOF Reality group and there seem to be a lot of questions surrounding this topic and I totally understand because when I was first getting into this hobby with sim racing it was a question that I had and at the time there really weren't any clear answers about it. And if you don't know what motion compensation is, it has to do with when you're in VR and you're on a motion simulator, when the motion simulator moves, so does the image in your headset. And if you're supposed to be fixed in place in a cockpit of a spaceship or an airplane or a race car, and the rig is moving left and right and surging forwards and backwards, that position that you're in, in the cockpit, is going to move with the motion of the rig. So it's not going to feel like you're actually stuck in your seat. It's going to feel like you're moving all around and it's, it's going to be a bad experience. Now depending on how much your rig moves, you can kind of get away with not having motion compensation. But if you have a lot of movement in your rig, having good motion compensation will definitely improve your experience. It'll make you feel like you're much more in the cockpit, you're in your seat, you're not moving, and everything will just feel more immersive. So there's a few different ways of doing motion compensation, and I'll go over as much as I know about it. Um, but it basically boils down to two pieces of software. One is open motion compensation, and the other one is open XR motion compensation. And open VR motion compensation is with Steam VR, and open XR is open XR, not using Steam VR. Um, I have never tried open XR. I've only used Steam VR motion compensation, so I can't speak to OpenXR too much, but my understanding is it essentially works the same way, just the user interface uh, is a little bit different. So there's two or three different ways of doing motion compensation. One is using a physical tracker, two is using what's called a whip motion sensor, and three is using math that's outputted from your motion software. The software that controls the motion of your rig will output your math, all, will do all the math and output the necessary data for motion compensation. But it all boils down to using those two programs, either the Open VR motion compensation or the Open XR motion compensation. It's just a matter of how you feed that program the information that it needs. Now my experience has been that having a physical tracker like a Quest Pro controller or a Quest 3 controller has given me the best results. I've never been able to, uh, I've never purchased a like a Vive tracker and with the lighthouses and use that. I did try using a Valve Index controller and that worked pretty well. But my best experience has been using a Quest 3 controller. The Quest 2 controller worked quite well. The Quest Pro controller worked okay, but it needed really good lighting. And the Quest 3 controller just almost works flawlessly. And it will probably, my guess is that it's probably going to be the same for like the Quest 3S or whatever. Um, so that has been my go-to solution for motion compensation is using a controller with my VR headset. Um, I did try now that SimHub has implemented motion compensation into its software. I did try using the built-in motion compensation with that and I had mixed results. I couldn't really get it to work that well and I think it has to do with the speed at which the rig is moving and I don't know that the program knows exactly how fast the rig is moving. So it, it knows that, hey, it's sending the rig forward, 
but I don't know that it knows exactly how fast the rig is moving forward or how fast the rig is pitching left or right. So I got mixed results from that. I think you probably would have better results if you were on like a like a true actuator, like an AC motor actuator rig where it was super responsive. You might have better results with the built-in motion compensation from the uh, the Sim Hub software. So this video today, I'm going to be talking about using a Quest controller and using a 3D printed mount that I designed and showing you guys how I do that. In the description of this video, I will share a link to my STL file for the 3D printed mount that I use for the Quest 3 controller. So I'm going to show you how to assemble that 3D printed piece and the difference between using a Quest 2 controller versus a Quest 3 controller. So I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll show you the mount, how that works, and then I'll show you the software inside the VR headset and what you need to do there. Okay, so these are the pieces that you will 3D print or have somebody 3D print for you. You have the main cup holder for the controller. This is for the right hand controller on the Quest. And then you have two little clamps and this bracket with sort of a groove in it. And if you're using a Quest 2 controller, this cup will fit that controller perfectly. But hopefully you're using a Quest 3 controller. And if we put a Qu Quest 3 controller in it like this, it almost fits, but it's just not quite right. And it wants to kind of kind of pop out. It just doesn't quite sit down in there perfectly. So what we need to do is take a heat gun and uh, we're going to warm this up and shape it to the to the controller. So this is just a small heat gun which works great. And I'm just going to warm up the top of this piece until it just gets a little bit pliable. I'm just going to check to see it's starting to get a little bit soft. It doesn't take a lot of heat, so I'm going to warm it up just a little bit more. So it's getting pretty pretty soft to the touch and then I'm just going to push the controller down in it so it's nice and secure just kind of hold it there and that will shape that cup perfectly to the controller And then we'll just kind of let that cool down. And while that's cooling down, the way that this is going to attach to your rig is on a three quarter inch piece of pipe. Now this piece of pipe is from like a shelving unit. So it has a threaded end, which is nice because you can run a quarter, uh, quarter 20 inch bolt up through the bottom of it and mount it to your rig. Um, but it doesn't have to be something like this. It can be any piece of three-quarter inch pipe. So copper pipe, 
You could probably even use PEX, uh, PVC pipe, anything that's three quarters of an inch will work. And then you will need uh, two quarter 20 bolts with nylon locking nuts. And you will also need two M5 nut or bolts. with locking nuts. So these are M5 by about 34, 35 millimeters is good. And the quarter 20 bolts are, I think these are three quarters of an inch. Yeah. Three quarter inch, quarter twenties. Very standard hardware. Okay, then we're going to take this piece here. And we're going to drop the two quarter twenty bolts in there. And we're just going to kind of line them up with the hex that's in there but we're not going to push them all the way down yet and then that this piece will fit into the main cup holder like that and then we're going to use our or put our clamps on and you'll notice that the hole on the clamp is closer to the bottom here so there's less of a space here than it is up here so where the hole is closer to the bottom that is going to be closer to this edge here so then this is going to slip over this nut just like that or that bolt just like that and then the same thing on the other side and then once those are all lined up you can go ahead and Put your quarter 20 nylon locking nuts on and you can go ahead and tighten those down. Now once they're tightened down, the heads of these bolts should be pretty much flush with this trough here. And then you can see how it'll slide over that rod like that. Then you'll just go ahead and put your M5 bolts through like this. with your nylon locking nuts on the other side. And we'll just kind of get those started. the rod through you don't have to go crazy tight on these ones it's gonna snug them down 
and then that's held nice and secure. So that will attach to your rig somewhere. And then you just drop your controller in like that. And there you go. All right, I'm gonna jump over into VR and I'll show you my open uh, open VR motion compensation settings. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to open up uh, Steam VR, and I'm using uh, the virtual desktop app. And then once uh, Steam VR is open, you want to make sure that you're sitting in your rig and that your view is centered. So you can recenter your view in Steam by clicking this, then look straight ahead. Your view is recentered, and then you'll go ahead and you'll open up Open VR Motion Compensation, and you will go to Settings, and what I found works the best is the LPF beta value set to 0.1 and the DEMA samples at 20. And then what you want to do is check this uh, velocity and acceleration to zero. Check that. The offsets for virtual driver have nothing to do with this because you're not using a virtual driver. You're using a physical tracker. So... You don't need to worry about any of this stuff. And I've never gotten these uh, keyboard hotkeys to work properly, so don't even worry about that. So you just want to um, worry about this stuff up here, this uh, the beta value, the DEMA samples, and the velocity and acceleration. And then once you've done that, you go back and click on Enable Motion. Or I'm sorry, you want to select your reference tracker, which is going to be the right hand controller for the quest and then you'll take your right controller and you'll put it in the cup that we 3d printed so that'll sit right in front of you now when you do this every time what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to settings and your lpf beta value and your dema samples those will be saved but for some reason it doesn't save the velocity and acceleration to zero so you just have to come in here check that box and then go back, make sure your right controller is selected, and then hit your enable motion compensation, check that box, and hit apply. And then that will start the motion compensation, and then you can look under up here and it says status motion compensated. And you can do this at any time. You can do it when you first open up Steam VR. You can do it once the game's already been opened. It doesn't matter. You can switch it on and off, start it and stop it anytime you want. So now you'll notice, I don't know if this will come across on screen, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually touching this controller that's up here in the 3D printed cup. And I'm going to try to keep my head as still as possible and I'm going to wiggle the controller just a little bit. You see how the screen moves with the controller? so you know it's working and then you just launch your game and you are good to go